Allison says, I feel like we've all forgot uh, that we just have to live with one another and it's already hard enough. We don't need to make it harder. No, we don't need to make it harder. As a matter of fact, well, you know what? We're going to be coming up on a talk uh, real, real soon about that very thing, Jessica. As a matter of fact, let's just go to it now. So the other day on Facebook, uh, someone sent this meme to me. Now, that fellow there is Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a Lutheran pastor during the uh, 1930s and early 40s. He was a um, vocal opponent to Nazism and to Adolf Hitler. In particular, he was vehemently opposed to the Nazis um, usurping the Lutheran Church. Uh, if you're not aware, I believe it was in 1936 in some of the accords, um, the German government um, upheld that the, the, the Lutheran Church was, was Germany's official church and that Hitler was the head of the church. The Fuhrer was the head of the church. And Bonhoeffer was not happy. Now, something you might not know about him also is that he went back to Germany when the Nazis took power. He was actually, I believe he was in New York at the time, New York City at the time, in seminary. And uh, uh, a great, great deal of his, at least according to one of his biographers, uh, a great source of strength for him. Um, a, a, a great catalyst for his own faith and for his faith faith journey, for his own zeal, came from his experiences in the African uh, African American churches in uh, in Harlem uh, during the late twenties and early thirties. But when the Nazis took over, he went home. Instead of just staying in the New in New York, safe and sound. He went home. He wasn't married. He didn't have any children. He had his family was over, his mom and dad and his brothers and sisters were over there, but he could have stayed safe and he didn't. He went to Germany and after uh, Germany declared that Hitler was the head of the Lutheran Church, this guy and a bunch of his friends, a bunch of his colleagues started an alternative Lutheran Church and they opened alternative seminaries where they could train pastors up the right way outside of outside of the state's involvement in the church there's a reason for the separation of church and state folks anyhow Bonhoeffer says this your life as a Christian should make non-believers question their disbelief in God Your life as a Christian, the work you do, the way you live, the way you are seen to live, should make non-believers question their disbelief in God. It's not about making, it's not about trying to convert everybody. That's not what he's saying. He's just simply saying, the way you live your life should be a reason for others to question their beliefs and their disbeliefs. That's amazing to me. And this is exactly, this is exactly the kind of Christian that I want to be. It's exactly the kind of Christian that, that, I, that I want to grow up and become. I'm not eloquent in my words. I never will be. I'm not an apologist. I, I, I'm not going to have arguments with people. I've had people come to me and say, hey, oh, Reverend Ed, how about we have a, you come on my channel and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about God and, and God's existence and you can prove it to me. And I can't prove that to you. I have no desire to prove that. I have no desire to make converts. I just, I just want to show the world the love of God. Let the world figure out what they want to do with it. I just want to proclaim the gospel in my deeds and in my actions and in my life and let the world figure out what to do with it. I just want to be 
a person who is following Jesus so closely that I'm covered in his dust and I want the world to be able to see that and then let the world figure out what they want to do with it. This is who we're supposed to be as a church, as believers. People who are just fixated on living the life that Jesus called us to live. We're not worried about being out there. We're not worried about being out there trying to demand people live in a particular way, trying to demand that they they, they take on or adopt this or adopt this belief, adopt this or that belief system or, or, or moral. I don't need them to adopt my ideals or my values. That's not who we're called to be. So much of what Jesus says, including when he talks when he talks about the Great Commission, going out into the world and making disciples. It's action. It's an action verb. It's not berating. It's not condemning. It's not threatening. It's, it's doing and being. Your life as a Christian should make non-believers question their disbelief in God. Again, they can do what they like with it. But when they see me, I want them to scratch their heads and say, Is this guy for real? This guy really believes, this, right? When they see us, that's, is that what these people really believe? They're, they're for real? This is what they're really about? Tell you something, there was a guy. So we're reading this book in the church, uh, or we've read it, we're, we're, we're trying to put it into practice. It's called uh, Surprise the World. Uh, great book, Surprise the World, really tiny, thin thing, so even I can read it, it's wonderful. Um, and it talks about how we as Christians are supposed to, to bless people and to eat with people and to uh, listen to people and to learn and to and descend. And lovely framework. I, I really, really, really am enjoying it. But in the book, in the first, I want to say it's the first chapter or the second chapter, the author quotes from the from the writings of a Roman emperor. I believe it was Julian, but I, I don't quote me on that. And, and I can't find the book around here anywhere where I would have looked it up. But in these letters, the author quotes Julian's talking about this new cult that has that has that is making its way in Rome and that is growing really, really, really quickly. And he's really he he wants the state, the Roman state and the Roman state religion to, to reevaluate how they're doing business because these Christians, they're loving everybody and they're feeding people and, and they're giving money away and they're housing people and they're taking care of the sick and they're, they're taking care of the dying and the children and, and, and they're doing all these, all these great things. And, and, and the emperor says, why aren't we doing this stuff? How come we're not doing this stuff? They're getting all this great press. Their churches are growing, over, like, overflowing. <laughs> they're growing too fast because they're being so kind and lovely and wonderful and awesome. How come we can't do that? Surely to God, our priests and our worshipers can, can live this way too, can, can do these things as well. That to this emperor was the threat of the Christian church. Their love, the way they loved their neighbor, was the threat to, to the city, to the Romans, and to their way of life, and to their religion. That's who, that's who we need to be. Don't need to do anything else. We just need to live lives that make non-believers question their disbelief in God. 
Now, it just occurred to me that this is a meme. <laughs> and like many memes, maybe Bonhoeffer didn't say this, but it sounds like Bonhoeffer. Bonhoeffer is, I think he's the, he is the guy that says something along the lines of um, the church is the body of Christ physically active and alive in the world. So the fact that he says this doesn't, the fact that this meme says that he said it doesn't surprise me at all. I hope he said it. Anyway, amen. Amen.